I know how busy we all are. We have jobs and overscheduled kids and overscheduled lives and social media and TV to watch, and we don't want to cook, right? It's famously been said that we spend more time watching people cook on TV than we spend actually cooking. In 1973, people spent two and a half hours on food prep for the day. Before you faint, in 2018, people spent 17 minutes on food prep for the day. I don't even know what I'm making for dinner in 17 minutes. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put together a three course meal, including dessert, and have all the nutrients you need. It's so easy. You do have to be able to chop, but you'll get there. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is make a chickpea farro soup. It's a whole grain and a bean together. This is like your main course, and everything else we do is on the side. So we're gonna take extra virgin olive oil, our pan is not hot, right? Extra virgin olive oil is a high heat oil, but you don't want to heat it without ingredients in there because otherwise you lose the flavor. And you want to keep the flavor, right? The job of soup is to be sweet and to relax the body so the rest of your food digests well. So you want to keep your oil as flavorful as possible. So the next thing to go in, or the first thing actually, is finely minced garlic and finely diced red onions. The more finely you can dice your ingredients, the sweeter your soup, right? There's more surface area to bleed and you get more of the sugars of the veggie in there. Then you start on like a medium heat, tiny pinch of salt so that the vegetables start to bleed their juices into the oil. See, it was a tiny pinch, right? And we'll just kind of move them around until the sizzle builds. And while that happens, we're gonna come over here and cut celery into tiny dice. And you do that by splitting the celery into three or four spears, leaving the top attached. It doesn't go flying all over the board. It's so easy. Could you use a food processor to do this? Yes. It will take you longer to clean the food processor than it'll take you to dice the celery. So learn how to use your knife, get really good at this, and you'll be so grateful. You'll whip up dinner in no time. Goes in with the carrots, I mean the onion and the garlic, Getting ahead of myself, cause I have to dice carrots next. Move it around. And now we're gonna make the soup a little spicy. While this is designed to be easy for you to make, you also want the soup to serve the purpose of your life. Everything you cook should serve the purpose of your life. Yes, it should be sexy, but it also has to serve the purpose of your life. So, we're gonna stimulate circulation with a little bit of hot spice. You can use red chili flakes, you can use hot sauce. Red chili flakes give you a nice smooth heat. I'm just gonna saute that in. The longer it cooks, the hotter it gets. So if you're not really sure about hot spice, you might wanna start light and work your way up. The next thing we're gonna add to this is going to be some crushed tomatoes. These are out of a can. If you can yourself, which I hope you do, just use those. I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit. And go back here and dice a carrot. Now a carrot's a long vegetable. So it's really challenging to cut it into spears and not you know, damage yourself. So I cut the carrot in half first, cut it in half again, and then so the bottom half of the carrot is in quarters. And then you just run your knife along it into a small dice. If you cut Smaller spears, you get even a smaller dice, but there's no need to chop as though you're putting confetti in the soup. You know what I mean? Just a nice dice. So we're doing the same thing with the top half. If the carrot top half was much bigger than the bottom, I would cut that into three spears. No problem. And then this is gonna go right on top of our tomatoes. Tomatoes are starting to simmer. You're getting that nice onion and garlic smell in the house, which is really nice and sends people running for dinner. That goes in. And the next thing, and this is optional, don't have to add these, but I love them. You wanna add some small fingerling potatoes. And the reason I say the small ones are is they are lower in sugar and not as acidic in the system. So if you wanna add potatoes for the texture in the soup and that mouthfeel, you wanna to try to use the little ones or the new potatoes that have the red skin on them. The smaller, the better. 
because that will help you to digest them and not have such um, acid indigestion after you eat potatoes. Right, so even roasted in the oven, these are the potatoes I use, these little fingerlings. They go in. And now come the two stars of the soup. The first one is farro. Farro, you have to learn how to roll your R's if you're gonna eat farro. It's got two R's in Italian, that's rolled. So, farro is a grain that's 7,000 years old. It's high in fiber, high in vitamins, high in minerals, loaded with iron, it's even high in protein. We're gonna put about a half cup to a cup into the soup. And then the next thing to go in is chickpeas. Chickpeas seem like Clark Kent, but they are loaded with nutrients, fiber, and minerals that prevent digestive diseases. I'm using canned chickpeas, I won't lie to you. They're not on the stove simmering for hours. Opened a can, drained them off, rinsed them so you don't become uh, musical when you eat them, and they're going right in. This soup will cook in 25 minutes because I used canned chickpeas. We're gonna add water. You wanna have about four times the amount of farro, water as farro, so the soup gets nice and creamy. And this will cook for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, it's gonna look pretty much the same. Except the tomatoes look a little more finished. And you see the soup took on a nice sort of brothy quality. So now all we'll do is season it with salt. This is to your taste. But if there's four cups of water, let's say, in your soup, you wanna use about a half a teaspoon of salt. Don't get too carried away, or your soup stops serving the purpose of your life and makes you wanna have a beer. That's not the goal. So now let it simmer for a couple minutes while you prepare the garnish. You wanna garnish a soup when you're done making it, especially if it's cooked for a half hour or more, because if you don't garnish it, it makes you feel heavy. This will make you feel fresh. If your basil, however, looks like this at the end of the summer, we use parsley. So we're just gonna take the parsley and coarsely chop it. I take the stems off. Some people save the stems and use them. I usually compost them. You just wanna take those tough stems off because they can be a little bitter. And then just coarsely chop. I like a lot of parsley in a soup. And when I've made a big pot like this, I may not garnish each bowl I might just take the garnish, pop it in, and then serve the soup. So, now we'll take a ladle. Stir the garnish in really quickly. And when you serve a soup like this, which is sort of a feast in its own right, what's really being expected after that is a salad or a simple side dish and dessert because this is really the star of the show, our chickpea farro soup.